you have a Langmuir Systems CNC plasma cutter and you're pulling your hair out trying to figure out how to generate designs to be able to cut and put it to use and justify all this money that you've just spent. So today we're going to show you how to take a general silhouette, turn it into a drawing and a toolpath so that we can get you started cutting. settled in make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and we'll see if we can't get you cutting sparks okay guys let's get started so obviously to start off with I am working off a PC Windows machine here so to whom it may concern that is what we're working with here so the first thing you're gonna want to do is start off with downloading Inkscape and Autodesk Fusion 360 those are the two programs that we're gonna be using today so give you a second to pause and make sure you get those downloaded Next thing we're going to want to do is create four new folders on your desktop. So go and create four new folders. The first one is going to be named DXF. There we go. So the second one is going to be named SVG. SVG. The third one is going to be named Parts to cut and the fourth one is going to be named fix and there we go so the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to find a silhouette that we want to work with so maybe you have one already or maybe we can go to the internet and find one so let's bring up our browser and let's do a bottle opener so let's go silhouette bottle opener now when looking for silhouettes I want to caution you guys there are copyrighted things and stuff so do your due diligence with that you can scan through and we're gonna go down here to this little guy best free opener silhouette and he says best free silhouette opener images for download so I'm gonna assume that since it's a free download that they don't mind us using it so do your due diligence on copyrights but we're gonna take and click and drag this image to our desktop we can close out our browser and we're gonna drop that in our pictures folder so we know where it's at next thing we're gonna do is we are going to open up Inkscape so we'll give this a second to open up there we go now once you've entered Inkscape, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your cursor is what is the tool that you're using and that is determined by this little guy up in the corner here. And then we want to go to File and click File and we're going to scroll down to the Import button. So we're going to click our Import button and then the default usually is your desktop. So now we've got these four new files that we've made right here easy to find. So we're going to go to our pictures file and there is our silhouette. So we're going to click on that and open it up. And we are going to push OK to import it. So next we're going to take our silhouette and we're going to drag it to the center of the paper here. And we want to click on it and you can see those arrows change direction that just kind of defines that you're in the right spot there. Now I'm not super familiar with Inkscape, I'm just bringing you through the function of creating a bitmap off of this so that we can turn it into an SVG and therefore import it into Fusion 360. So after we've completed that, the next thing we want to go to is our path drop down. So let's click on our path and we are going to toggle down to trace bitmap and we're going to click on that. So we can drag this off to the side so we can see it. And all we should need to do is click the OK button there. Once we've clicked the OK button, we can scroll back over to our upper left hand side over here. And we are going to click File and drop down to Save As. Now, when it pops up, the important thing to look at is right down here in this Save As type bar, we want to make sure that it is an SVG. And it should default to an SVG, but just make sure that. Then we're going to name our file name our file excuse my lack of vocabulary so this file let's just call it 
opener opener and then we are going to save that file so now we should be able to close out of Inkscape and we should be able to go to our SVG file. We'll just look at it. Look, we have our SVG file here. It's right as an opener. We can confirm that and then we will open up Fusion 360. So we'll give that a second to open up here. Okay, now that Fusion 360 is opened up, the first thing that we are gonna wanna do is go over to our upper right side and we have our cube here that's gonna show the orientation of our drawing and we wanna click on the front. So when we're using the linear system setup, you always want your Z axis to be facing towards you. So as long as our cube is facing towards the front here in this orientation, we should be in the right spot. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go up to our create sketch and double click that and then go to our plane and double click our plane. And now you can see our sketch palette popped up over here and we know that we are opened up and ready to sketch. I can, we don't want to finish our sketch, but I can close this out so it's out of the way, kind of fold it up. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to come up here to our upper right hand corner and take the insert drop down and slide down to our insert SVG and click on that guy. Now we're going to go select our SVG file. And here are our four folders that we made. So let's go to our SVG folder and select our opener. Now we can see our openers popped up right here. And then we can select OK over here on our insert SVG. OK. And now we have our bottle openers. So now if you want to move these guys around, you can go down here and hit this little hand in the pan and you can grab a hold and drag this over here and you can zoom in by the roller on your mouse. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to be able to use these guys is we want to go up here to our constraints and now I'm not a professional with Fusion 360. All I know that is when you first import your SVG these come in as a green highlight and for them to be workable and to be editable they need to be blue and how we do that is we go up to our red lock button up here which is our fix unfix function and click on that now you can see our cursor has the little red lock right beside it and next we're going to go to the upper left corner and we're going to highlight our parts here let's highlight them and then for some reason I had to highlight it twice but now we can see they turn from a green to a blue now this is going to be critical to be able to do your editing. Now we only want one bottle opener. So, so now that we're done with our fix unfix function, we will right click and hit cancel. So now you can see our little red lock is not beside our cursor again. And we only want to make one bottle opener today. So I am going to highlight the second bottle opener and then I am going to right click on it and click delete and there it is once it's blue all this stuff is editable so I'm going to show you a couple key functions to use in this program to be able to edit your bottle opener before you write your toolpath here so the first thing we're going to want to do is see what size it is so you never know exactly what size it is when it imported so we're going to go up to our inspect button in our upper right corner and click the ruler and then we can come over and select the furthest points apart. We're going to go to the top and we're going to select the bottom and we can see that currently it is 0 .100, oh, sorry, 1.004 inches. So it's about one inch. We want to make that a little bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to close our measuring function over here. Close both of them up and we are going to hit our quick key for our search. So reach down and hit your S key and that's going to bring up this little window which is your search engine and then you're going to hit S again to, to find your scale so we want to scale this up so let's select scale now we're going to come over here to our scale palette and the first thing it wants us to do is select our entities so we want to highlight all the entities or highlight the part that we would like to scale so let's highlight the whole thing and then the next thing we want to do is select a point. So let's hit select here. 
and then come over and it honestly doesn't matter where you click on on it it just wants you to show it a point so let's select a point on this guy There we go. Uh, don't ask me why that took a couple times to click on it. So now this is scaled by proportion of multiples. So we know that it was one inch long now before. So I want this to be roughly four inches long. So I'm going to hit four, and it's basically timesing it by four. So now you can see that it made it a little bit larger there. So we're going to click OK. And then we're going to go up to our inspect again, and we're going to measure it again. So we're going to click the top, we're going to click the bottom, and inspect it. And see, we multiplied one inch by four, so we're just under four inches there now. We are at, actually, it probably is four inches if it measured, actually measured from the tip. There we go. So we are at four inches from this point to this point. Excuse me. So the next thing that maybe we want to do is maybe we want to add a custom text to it so let's modify this a little bit so let's say we want to make add a text to our bottle opener before we cut it out so let's hit our search key again so our search key is the s key so hit your s key on your keyboard and this brings up your search again and then we are going to hit t for text and we can scroll down and see that there's a text function here so we can hit our text select the general vicinity that you would like your text to hit. So I'm going to select right here. Now we can come up to our text drop down and let's say your name is Sam. So I'm going to put a bold capital S in there. The next function on our text drop down is the size of text you want to use. So we are going to make that, let's see, roughly like let's say 1.5 inches tall. And then you can make it bold bold is always good when you're plasma cutting because it just stands out a little better so you can also select a font here we'll just go with what we have here next we'll grab the s and we'll drag it down to the center of our part and select okay we are okay with the size and location the next thing we're going to need to do is make that s into a actual drawing line so we want to right click on our S and we're going to drop down to explode text. And there we go. Our text is now a drawing line, but as we can see, it is highlighted green. So if you recall what we had to do with the original bottle opener, we're going to need to code up to our fix unfix function, double click, and we're going to drop down and we are going to highlight our S and there we go. Now we are blue. Now we are going to right click and hit cancel so that we're no longer have that little lock by our cursor and we have a complete bottle opener. Now there are a couple other things you can do. Let's say you want to create a line and add something to it. You can hit your quick key for line which is L or you can go up here to your line button on the upper left hand corner and we're gonna you can click a line and make a line wherever you want let's say you're going there and we'll click another line there and you can add on and build whatever you want to your bottle opener or your part that you were doing and then maybe you don't like what you did so you're going to hit your quick key to erase it and the erase function on this program is called trim so you can hit t for trim on your keypad and it will make this little s function x pop by your cursor then you can click on it and trim it right back off so hopefully that was helpful there so before we go and write our toolpath one last thing I like to do that just helps out on the back end is we are going to assume that our kerf width is 55 thousandths so double 55 thousandths is roughly 110 thousandths quickly translated we don't want any spaces that are less than 125,000. So we're going to go up to inspect and we're going to check out the width of our little S here. And we want to make sure, whoops, go to inspect. There we go. We want to make sure that we are more than 110,000, which we are good there. That is the smallest 
space that you're going to want when you're plasma cutting. Otherwise, it will just cause you headaches. Trust me. So next, let's get to writing our toolpath. But the first thing we're going to want to do is the first thing we're going to want to do is extrude our part. Now I see a lot of people that just go on to the tool writing function without extruding their part, and it will cause you a lot more headaches. Trust me. So how to extrude our part? We are going to right click on our part and click press pull. Next, we are going to select our press pull. So we want to come over here to this guy highlights, click it. And then we're going to come down to this little box right here. And let's say we are cutting this out of eighth inch. So eighth inch is 0.125. We'll enter our parameters, click enter. And there we go. We have our bottle opener. So now we can grab our little square up in the side and orbit around to see how cool it is. We've extruded it. It's eighth inch. Now make sure you hit the front button again before you start. So let's actually write a toolpath now. Let's go up to our upper left corner, to the design button. We're gonna click on that and drop down to the manufacturer function. Once we get to the manufacturer function, we are gonna go over to our units of measure and hit change active units. Now this little banner is gonna pop up on the very right side over here and we are gonna select inches and okay. Now you have to do that every time. I'm not sure why you can't make it default to it, but that's the way it is. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is go up to our upper left corner again and hit the setup folder. Don't hit the drop down, hit the folder itself. Now this is gonna create our toolpath setup. With the Langmuir systems, the easiest way that I have found to do your tool setup is you wanna collect your zero, you wanna make your setup zero in the bottom left hand corner. So we're gonna click this dot in the bottom left hand corner so that we can see that our X, Y axis is gonna start in the bottom left hand corner. What this is gonna do is make it easier for you to line up on your material. When you start your cut, you can put your torch in the furthest bottom left hand corner and know that you will have enough room to cut. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna come over to the setup function on the right hand banner here we're gonna click the drop down and click cutting. We're not milling today, we're gonna to do some cutting. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go down to the model button and click body. Now, when you click body, you just need to make sure that you, your part has highlighted in blue and that is all you need to do on this part. We can click the okay now and move on. Now, I am leaving out lots of functions here. I'm just doing this in the simplest fashion so that you can go from zero to be able to get a cut part. As you learn, there will be much more functions that you can do to fine tune things. This is just the simplest version. So the next thing that we wanna move on to is cutting. So we wanna come up to our upper left hand corner and we wanna click our cutting function here. Now our banner is gonna pop up on the furthest right hand side here and we're gonna come over and select our tool. Now this is assuming that you have watched the Langmuir Systems video on how to set up your tool. Um, if you have not, please drop down in the comments and I can make a video of that, but we're gonna assume that you've set up your tool and as you know, if you've watched that video, your tool is gonna be located in the local file. So we're gonna click our local file and select our tool and select okay. Now, once you set up your tool, you only have to do that once, but you do have to select it every single time. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down and we're gonna select our feed rates. Now, all three of these feed rates will need to be the same. There are different feeds and speeds. For eighth inch running the Razor Weld 45, I've found the best feed for the Razor Weld 45 is for eighth inch thick material. For the Razor Weld 45, I've found the best feed rate for eighth inch thick material is 65 inches a minute. Now, if you have different machines, this is going to be different for you, but this gives you a good starting point. So we're gonna go 65, highlight this, 65, and I apologize, I'm gonna computer illiterate here, 65. Now do not push the okay button yet. Next thing we're gonna go up to this, we're gonna go up to the 
geometry button and we want to click on that this is where extruding your part helps out a lot you do not have to select the individual tool paths it will do them all for you what you want to do is you want to s select this little box select same plane faces now you want to come over and the important part is the way you click your part so you do not want to click it like this where just the perimeter is highlighted you want to come over it to where the entire part is mat and click it and there we go we have our tool pass now you want to come in and make sure that everything is correct meaning that your cuts on the inside your arrow is on the inside and your cuts on the outside let me pan over here a little bit your arrows are on the outside so we know that is correct and ready to go next thing we want to do is come over to our passes tab and we're going to click on that the only thing that you're going to need to do here like I said there are other settings once you get more advanced with it but just to get you started is we want to click on our composition types and we're going to click on that and select control in the computer next tab we're going to come up here and we are going to click on the linking tab now just some general ones quick to get you started is I'm going to recommend you do a zero lead-in radius I'm going to recommend that you do 90 degrees of lead-in and I am going to recommend that your whoops I got 92 there 90 degrees of lead-in and then we have our lead-in distance now the main thing you want to consider for your lead-in distance is your kerf width next thing we have here is our lead-in distance now there are two main things that we want to consider with our lead-in distance one is our kerf width and the smallest width of cut on our part and our lead-in distance wants to be somewhere in between half the smallest width of our part and our kerf width so we know our kerf width is 55 thousandths and let's just say that half the smallest area of our part is let's call it 140 thousandths so half 140 thousandths is 70 thousandths so we can and that is still larger than our kerf width so we can go 0 0.07 for our lead in distance now you can collect and select an entry point if you would like you do not have to for it to continue your cut path so next we're going to select the OK button and over here it's going to write our tool path up now look at that we have a tool path that is written so the next thing you can do is you can go up here to your simulate button which is kind of fun we're going to click our simulate button and you can click play and you can watch that guy simulate the cut you can even grab the cube and pull it over and you can see it cut now it's not going to cut that fast this is just a simulation the other thing you can do is you can go over to your statistics over here in your simulate drop down and it will show you your machining time so it is going to actually take 37 seconds to make this cut and you have two point four feet of cut which is crazy and a little four inch part that you have that much cut distance but it's crazy how much those add up so now that we have our cut path there the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to this button the post process button and we are gonna click the G1 G2 button and it's gonna bring up this little tab here now this is assuming that you have watched the linear systems Mach 3 install video and you have properly uploaded your full version of Mach 3 so the only thing that you're gonna to have to deal with after you've completed that linear systems video is your pierce delay so we're gonna come down here and we're gonna select our pierce delay on eighth of an inch material depending on your machine and stuff you're gonna want that somewhere in between 0.5 and 1 seconds with my machine with eighth inch material 0.7 seconds seems to be the magic number and then we can hit post now we pop up to our desktop again and name our folder so we are going to name it I like to add the size of the item that I'm doing so I'm going to do four inch opener and then I'm going to select the parse to be cut folder and we're going to save it 
So there you go. We've created a toolpath from a silhouette. Now we can exit out. When we go to open our Mach 3 loader, if you've already got all that stuff done, we'll wait for this to load up. We can select our reset button and select load G code. Now our file is going to pop up here and we're going to select our desktop because we know that those files are on the desktop and our parts to be cut. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully that video wasn't too long and hopefully it was valuable to you. If it was, please subscribe. We're going to do some more videos on other ways that you can do designs, whether that be pictures or parts. We're going to have some more videos coming up, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on those. Make sure you hit that like button. That will help the alg algorithm out so that we can make more videos as well. Also, if there's a specific problem that you're having related to the OG Langmuir Systems table, drop a comment down below and I will do my best to make a video to solve that problem for you. So, thanks for watching again guys and go build something.